So I'm Seb, and uh, I'm the, uh, I was the founder of a company called eSpotting, which was one of the very first uh, pay-per-click networks uh, in Europe. Uh, a lot of you probably already buy keywords off Google and Yahoo. Um, before they both entered the market, there were a couple of companies. One was called, well, the main one was called GoTo back in the US, which originally started the pay-per-click search business, and they became Overture, and the European st uh, uh, starter was us, which was eSpotting. Um, we founded the business back in 99, and although I might be the founder of eSpotting and now the president of Miva, they're actually in fact the same company, so I'm not going to take credit for it. Someone said to me the other day, if we rebrand the company again, everyone will think you started up three companies, but no, actually, <laughs> there's only the two. Um, uh, Future is a company that I sit on the board of, start on the left. Stake Media is a, is a digital media buying agency that I'm chairman of. The rest of the companies in the middle there uh, all sit under the Miva brand. Uh, the websites that, and uh, properties that we currently own, uh, Spill being the sort of last or the latest that we've launched, which is an online um, movie review site. A lot is in the uh, personal web page space, a little bit like PageFlakes and NetVibes. A weather Studio does exactly what it says on the tin. Super Horoscopes, likewise. And Adjug is a business that I recently invested in with uh, Benchmark Capital, um, and that's a new online um, uh, uh, advertising exchange in Europe as well. Um, so you're going to see a couple of the things that I've talked about has already been mentioned, which is always a bit difficult going third, and then hopefully you'll have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> we can just skip fast, right? So, um, no, seriously, so I think you're going to see a lot of the same sort of things, but the, probably the most, um, most obvious, as Martha pointed out, and of, of which she was queen of, is free marketing and always look to plug your business every which way possible, like I just did only 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Notice how I went through all the different companies. So plug your business, a lot of free advertising, and um, the queen of that is sitting right here. Um, this was a photo taken. Um, there are now the, the probably about three to 400 of us now in the different organizations that we work in. This was taken back in 99 when we founded the business. Um, I'm not sure if I had a better haircut or looking rather serious there in the middle. But we founded the, the, uh, the business in uh, Daniel's flat, who's the guy on the left-hand side. And probably whilst we sort of started the business up, one of the things that was most difficult was actually getting the right team together. And I know we've talked about this a, a few moments ago. But we started the company back in, I think it was February 2000. And as Martha pointed out, only in April 2000, the bubble burst. <laughs> And so for us to go out and raise money, and when we used to go around and see the VCs and say, hey, we want to sort of raise some money for an online advertising business, most people thought we were nuts um, and laughed us out of their offices. And so um, although we continued to hire, we didn't actually have money to hire. Um, and so the team that we had around us, for the first nine months of the organization, we'd go out on a monthly basis and say, we can't pay you this week. Do you mind waiting another week? And cash flow being one of the sort of biggest killers of, ben of businesses, that was really important to have a team around us that were willing to wait an extra week to get their paycheck. And so I think that's fundamentally what can make or break an organization at a young stage. Um, this is one of my favorites. One of the things that we did very well at eSpotting was to, um, we created an enemy of Overture. So Overture was our main sort of competition out in the marketplace. And it's incredible how organizations focus themselves when they have, a co when they have one thing that they can focus on and we sort of created an enemy in Overture. And we often used to play lots of gags on them and drive them nuts, and we used to park our e-spotting cabs outside the launch of all their parties. Uh, they, ha they launched Overture in Paris, and we had our English cabs drive over to Paris and park them there. We also, at their last Christmas party in 2004, we delivered to the nightclub where they were having a party a bunch of those sort of swizzle sticks with e-spotting logos. And we told the manager to sort of give them out as part of the party, it was a promotion. He didn't know that eSpotting was Overture's competitor, and at the Christmas party, everyone had drinks with eSpotting in their hand, um, <laughs> which, which went down very well. This is my favorite. We, um, Overture, when they rebranded, didn't buy the URL overture.co.uk. They couldn't, they couldn't buy it. They couldn't convince this uh, hi-fi store up in Nottingham to sort of give them the URL. So I got on a train with a thousand pounds in cash, went into the hi-fi store, put it on the table to this guy and said, I would like to place an ad on your website. The guy had no idea who I was or why I wanted to do it. He agreed. I then put a search box 
on the Overture page and then took out ads in every single one of the trade press magazines saying that eSpotting now powers Overture.co.uk. Um, within about an hour of the first ad showing up, we had um, Overture's lawyers inside our office giving us all sorts of help. But those are the type of sort of fun things that you should do as a startup. I don't recommend you pick a fight with sort of $2 billion organizations, but this is cheeky and this is exactly the same stuff that, you know, it, work's got to be fun, right? If you don't enjoy what you do, then why do we do it? Um, don't be scared to change. Um, I don't tell a lot of people this, but um, e-spotting, originally when we first dreamt it up, was called babe spotting. <laughs> that is no lie. Um, I left my job for that. <laughs> How stupid was I? Um, originally, when we first, Daniel and I first set up eSpotting, we thought um, it set up a website where you can find girls on the web. Um, not proud of this, but at the time it seemed like a good idea. And effectively, what, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the business model probably went through about five or six different iterations. And it's very common for people and certainly entrepreneurs, to believe in the idea that they've come up with and sort of stick to that. But it's not uncommon for business models to change. And if the market dynamics change, you need to change with it. And don't be, afa don't be afraid to change the business model. Uh, I think a lot of people make that mistake. Um, and I'm not sure I'm going to show that one again next time. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. I'm not going to lie. It's true. You know, don't be afraid to change. And then probably um, the one that sort of stuck us through Thick and thin uh, was a, a sort of line that we always used to sort of share internally within the organization, which was improvise, adapt, and overcome. Um, if I remember the amount of times that I heard the word no, we wouldn't, uh, I don't think any of us would be standing where we are right now. And probably most of you that started your own businesses wouldn't have actually gone on to start your own businesses. Um, no, Seb, you cannot raise money in an environment like it is now. No, you can't launch e-spotting France now, you'd be crazy to go into Italy. Search exactly. There you go. <laughs> Should have listened to that one. Uh, although we did. Uh, no, you can't. Yeah, no, you won't be able to raise any money. No, you won't convince advertisers to come online. No, you haven't got... And the list goes on. And so the only th one thing I would really sort of press on you is that you will hear the word no several times or every day and just ignore it. Pretend you didn't hear it. And uh, always improvise, adapt, and overcome and find a way around it. Uh, and finally, um, there's, uh, put this politely, um, it's not a secret that we sold the business in 2003, um, and that was partly to do with the fact that Google launched its pay-per-click program in 2003. So um, with 80% of the market share, we think we timed it quite well. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that they don't want to sell it and continue to go. Um, make sure you don't make that mistake, and obviously when you think that it's ready to sell, take advantage of it. Um, and that's what we did. That's it. Thanks. Thank you.